This is a previous podcast replay. Maximizing client experience with John Strohmeyer, episode 307. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another amazing guest interview here on the Profit With Love podcast. I'm your host, Moshe Amsel, and I'm super excited with the company we've got today because I have John Strohmeyer for you. Now, John came into my world um, through an introduction from, I believe, Maddie Martin from Smith AI uh, when I was doing my first Law Firm Growth Summit, the 2019 uh, Law Firm Growth Summit, and she said, hey, here is a speaker that you need to have at your event. And we had a conversation. We then did the, um, his, his session for the, uh, for the summit. Uh, He's been back uh, as a speaker for the 2021 uh, summit and people just are loving his message because different than a lot of people who are focusing on marketing and sales or technology and processes, John's focusing on, client service. And client service is so important. We don't we don't talk about it enough. We don't focus on it enough. But the reality is, is that your best clients that come through the door are the ones that are referred by others. And they get referred by others because they walked away with an unbelievable experience from you. And the thing that we that we even if we do do that for some of our clients, we likely are not doing it for all of our clients. And that's where I'm really excited to talk to John today to kind of pick his brain and, and get some ideas of how can I systemize, um, processize a stellar client experience so that everybody who we serve walks away with the same feeling, walks away with the same, you know, the perfect example is when my grandmother passed away, one of my cousins got up at her funeral and he, and he got up Now we called her Safta. Safta's Hebrew for grandma. And he got up and he said, I was Safta's favorite grandson. And that was the crux of his speech was basically that every single one of her grandchildren felt like they were her favorite grand, grandchild because the, she treated us with such love and, and caring that we each felt that from her when directly in that interaction. And that's what your clients have to feel. Your clients have to each feel exactly the same, um, the same level of, of experience that the next client is feeling. So super excited to talk to John about this. I'm going to give you the official bio right now. John Strohmeyer is the proprietor of Strohmeyer Law PLLC in Houston, where he assists individuals and their business with cross-border tax planning, estate planning, and estate administrations. John is board certified in both tax law and estate planning and probate law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. Between college and law school, he spent four years working for the Four Seasons Hotel and Resorts, primarily as the night manager of the Austin property. He learned a lot about customer service there that lawyers are never taught and will never learn if they just work for other lawyers. John, welcome to the show. Moshe, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. It's my absolute pleasure. And I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Um, People want to know who you are. You know, that's we we always have to start with that at the beginning because they they don't know you, right? Who who is this guy, John Strohmeyer? Why should I listen to him? So give me the broad strokes. I know I gave you the the official intro, but, um, you know, tell us a little bit about your background and, and why did you decide to to make client experience your your thing? Well, sure. So yeah, the, the boring part, the part that doesn't really matter, and I'll get out of the way quickly, is I'm a tax and estate planning attorney. I'm in the Cool Kids Club for Estate Planners, the American College of Trust and Estate Council. That's all well and good. I'm really happy with that. 
but I'm here to talk about my first career when I worked in management for the Four Seasons Hotels and Resorts. And what that looked like for me was between college and law school, I spent four years at the Four Seasons in Austin. Now, the first year I was just working the front desk, but I got promoted and was ultimately the night manager for that Austin property for almost three years. And that meant that I would go in Tuesday nights at 11 p.m. I'd be there until about eight or nine the next morning. And then I'd do that five nights a week. So Tuesday through Saturday, 11 p.m. until the following eight or nine in the morning. And that hotel basically was under my care for those uh, eight hours, you know, from when the second shift left until the first shift showed up at, started showing up at about 6.30 or seven in the morning, everything ended up on my desk. So I got to see just about everything. And just, you know, here's the secret. It's the four seasons 24 seven. It didn't turn into the two seasons around 2.30 when the bar closed. We were still expected to have room service up at 6.30 or within 30 minutes. Uh, we were still expected to have cars pulled around in seven minutes. We had these standards we still had to hit, even though we had a skeleton crew of between 11 and 15 people on the overnight when during the day you'd have 150 plus employees in the hotel. And looking at that and seeing what I did there, you learn a lot about what it takes to run that ship and just know, all right, day in and day out, how are we going to take care of our guests? Then I went well, to law first school. Of all, <laughs> yeah. First, first of all, it never occurred to me that a hotel had 150 people there working during the day. Holy crap. I oh, didn't yeah. realize how much staff they have. All right. Yeah. It, it, you know, this was a comparatively, Four Seasons are comparatively small hotels. The one in Austin had 291 rooms. It's not a massive convention hotel where they're, you know, 2,000 rooms. It They're all designed to be small small to mid-sized hotels so you can focus on the guests, which looks a lot like law firms. We're not, you know, processing thousands of people every day. Even a large kind of the, the volume-based practices, they are, they're not shooting through that many clients every day that, you know, look, you know, if you're doing PI, if you're doing traffic ticket defense, DUI, things where you have heavy turnover, you have a lot of people coming through, but at the same time, it's not hundreds of people every day in and out. And that really gives us a chance to focus on those people, even if they are only with us briefly for small things. Right. So, okay. So uh, I, I'm, I'm with you and I, and I'm, I'm biting the bullet, right? I'm, we're, we're going to, we're going to talk about the client experience. What do you think is, is the most important way that somebody can think about the client experience, like you know, an attorney, they've been they've been brought up a certain way. They went to law school. They either worked for a big firm or worked for another firm, and then they went out on their own, or they just went straight to going out on their own. Uh, at, at 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 all of those junctures, client experience was not something that's been talked about, right? Right. So so how how should they think about that, and and what part of what of their delivery of their service delivery? can they consider to be part of the client experience? Yeah, so first things first, experience is important, but we want to remember, and I draw a line between the experience, this is going to be nothing new, experience is just what the client sees. The service aspect that I'm focused on is what the business is doing to deliver that. So think of it as, you know, like, this is how we hand something to them. The client just experiences the receipt of it. But there's more that goes into it than just the part that the client sees. So there's a whole deeper line to that. But when we take it out, what I'm concerned with is that people are getting uh, confused and they see these things of, you know, Zappos had a 10 hour service call, you know, Disney goes above and beyond. They're looking for little tweaks to make you know, moments magical. You know, Four Seasons is wonderful. Uh, Ritz Carlton has their Joshi story. And if you just look at that, you're going to take the wrong examples, you're going to take the wrong lessons, and you're going to waste a lot of time, money, and effort going down rabbit holes that don't help you improve the experience for your client. That, you know, adding that to your repertoire isn't going to make it better for clients. Like when, here's what I want people to think about right now. When you go to Disney, when you go to Four Seasons or Ritz, anything else like that where you're thinking grand service experience, even a basic restaurant, if you, you know, if you're or a restaurant where you're not just taking your food in a bag through your car window, 
you're going for some combination of entertainment, pampering, and fun. Nobody goes to their lawyer for entertainment, pampering, or fun. And so if we follow the lessons from Disney and Four Seasons that say, look, we need to maximize this service over the top uh, experience, you're going to end up trying to compete with Disney and Four Seasons and you're going to lose. Like nobody's going to come to you because you have a great drink menu. Nobody's going to come to you because you're offering this over the top experience. The experience clients want is resolve my issue, move the needle on my problem for me, get me out of jail, get my kid adopted, get me divorced, plan my estate, sue this guy because they hurt me, get me back right. and move the needle back to normality for, for what I'm looking for. Okay, so uh, I I totally understand that. You need to look at the clients, what the client wants and what the client needs in order to deliver a stellar a stellar experience for them, right? And I'm not sure if you're trying to get me away from the word experience, but um <laughs> in a order little to- bit but it, but it's I'm not a don't care about experience guy. I'm just saying we need to focus on the part that we can think about and make sure that the service is what we're doing. The experience is just the small fraction of that, that the clients get. Perfect. So, so how does a firm owner think about the important pieces to, to measure and to, and to create a process around to make sure that their clients are getting the right level of service uh, from them? Right. So we're going to start with, I want people taking the lowest risk they can. You know, I don't want you going and buying over the top gifts for clients because they're not coming to you for that. If they really wanted something like that, they'd probably go buy it themselves. Uh, You know, as a personal story, right when I started my own firm, I thought, oh my gosh, uh, my sister does these beautiful hand embroidered placemats where she'll put everybody's name, you know, mom, dad, child's name. So everybody's got these adorable placemats. And I sent these out to a few potential gifts, a few potential clients. And I was making a pretty big investment and it was not having the results. Like people were, they may have been blown away, but they weren't so blown away that they hired me. And that's what I don't want people doing. Like, yes, these are wonderful gifts, but it's not, it wasn't helping them get their estate planned. And right. so the, the small tweaks that we're looking for are things like when you have meetings in your office, show that people, are, you were ready for the meeting by having a notepad for everybody who is coming and a pen ready to go for them. Like just you're thinking through what are they going to need at that point so that they're not working, they're not trying to play catch up or think you just didn't think about them. You know, it's like, imagine right. you walk into a restaurant, you have a reservation for you and your wife for your anniversary, the two of you, the, you walk up, you say, you know, table, for, you know, reservation for Amsel. And they say, of course, come right this way. We've got a table ready for you. You walk up and it's a four seated table. There are four chairs, there are four napkins, four sets of silverware. Were they really ready for you? Or did they just pick the table that happened to be closest to them in the right section? You know, it's recognizing that clients can pick up on those little things and know, Mm -hmm. you know, like it doesn't cost, it didn't, it wouldn't have cost the restaurant a penny more to have two sets of silverware and napkins on the table for Mr. and Mrs. Amsell. It doesn't cost you anything to have the notepad and the pen ready to go on the table showing, oh, I knew three people were coming, including me, you know, me, the client somebody else who may be in there, we were ready to go. We kind of made it easy for them to see, oh yes, they were thinking about us more than the minutes. You know, we're not just tossing out a notepad of, oh, were you thinking about this? No, it's a meeting. We're going to be ready for you. We're going to, we know it's important. That's why we have this notepad and pen because we know you're going to want to take notes. We're not having an iPad for you to take home with you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sure, that'd be over the top, but that's (laughs) unsustainable. Right. Now, now what about having like a, a little name placard for where they're, they're going to be sitting at the table, you know, uh, uh, welcome, welcome, Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so. Um, is that over the top? Is that unnecessary? Like, what, where, where do you draw the line? The, 
the line is going to be, div- you know, lawyer answer. It's going to be different for everybody. <laughs> of course. But it's what can you consistently deliver on? And so instead of name placards, how can you make sure people know where they are supposed to sit? Here, I'm going to reach over. Look, I do w- trust in estates. I have clients come in and sign documents all the time. And I typically have, you know, husbands and wives come in to sign their documents. Well, we're going to have a stack of paper with their names on it. But when you walk in the room, you're not going to have, you're not going to be able to like figure out which of the two piles do you sit in front of. So what we do and what I've been doing for years, like I have blue paper clips for the guys, pink paper clips for the ladies. And that's a really good subtle signal that it costs us nothing. You know, I buy the the plastic paper clips uh, by the massive box. So, and then we just have people, uh, our summer interns, separate all the blue and pink ones out. So we've got them for the next year, but then it's really easy. We also, you know, it redounds to us when we're uh, scanning documents later, we know and can easily sort without having to actually read anything, whose document is whose. And it's super easy for us to just get those in place. And then, you know, like blue paper clips are for guys, pink paper clips are for the ladies. And we don't have to think about it anymore. It's just ingrained. It's not ready until this is done. I also know I can walk in and look at documents and see like if the paper clips are wrong, it's like Van Halen's brown M&Ms. You know, something else is wrong. I need to hand that back and say, you need to look at this again before it's ready. Right. Yeah, absolutely. That's a a really great um, tip. Um, uh, Unfortunately, some people are not so creative to come up with that, but uh, it's ideas like that, that are really, you know, really neat where you think about, you know, what, what is something I can do that's going to be, um, obvious, not so obvious. And, you know, uh, they may not even, when they walk away, they may not even walk away saying, wow, did you notice how they had, they had different color paper clips. So we knew which seat to sit at, sit by or which stack of papers is ours. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's removing confusion, removing the, the confusing situation um, lends to a better result because they don't they, they may remember the confusion more than they remember the 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 actual act that you took to avoid it. Right. And even even if, you know, somebody does sit in front of the wrong documents, it's usually a thing, you know, I don't even have to remember because I know the code. If they sit in the wrong seats, I can easily just see it and swap it and it takes, you know, half a second to fix. And nobody's, you know, like, oh, I didn't notice that, but now they do. It makes it easy for everybody. You know, yeah. and, also, and it saves the problem of, oh, Bill signed Sue's documents and Sue signed Bill's documents. Now what do we do to resolve this? Right. Yeah, that's a mess because now all of a sudden we got to call them back in to sign again. And now we look like morons and they're unhappy. Right. And that, you know, this is what we're paying for. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So let me ask you this um, Do you have some sort of, of rubric, um, framework, or something like that to, that highlights? where you can easily highlight for our listeners, where are the places in the client engagement that you can be looking for these, these opportunities to enhance the experience, the, the service level that you're providing? So it's throughout, and it's always going to be these small iterations. How can we make this thing 1% better? Rarely is it just over the top, come in and overhaul things. But you just always need to be looking at it from not only you as the lawyer, but you want to think about it as what is it like for my employee to deliver this, as well as what is it like for the client to receive it? It's, it's got to work for everybody. And most importantly, it's going to have to start working with your employees because if they can't deliver, it doesn't matter that they are not the ones uh, who can't deal, you know, can't deal with it. Like we need them to consistently deliver on this. And if it's just over the top, you know, we're going to have the the best omelet menu in the office. Like, 
nobody can deliver that and they shouldn't be coming to you for that. Focus on the things that you can consistently deliver and then you're just finding ways to one up it. You know, I, we started with chat on our website. We're slowly integrating video chat on our website so that people can see me and kind of get to know me faster and speed up the process. And, you know, my, pro my practice is tax and estate planning. So I'm de dealing with personal issues. People want to know who they're talking to in a way that some other practices, they may care less about the individual attorney. But for what I'm going to deal with and the kind of the deep level that I need to get with my clients to get things done, they want to talk and know to me. So how do we think about this? Remember, our primary job is to move the needle for our clients. They, are, they want us to help them solve some problem. So it's always gonna start there. The clients aren't coming to you because you have a fancy drink menu. They're coming to you to solve that problem. If you can have the nice options of drinks, clients are gonna be fine, but you know what? If you had a Google review that said, you know, attorney uh, Strohmeyer had the best drink menu, you should hire them. Yeah, I think right. I think it kind of you're you're yeah. smiling for the folks who are just listening on a podcast. Like that's they're not going to go well there made. for that, yeah. right? Quite well made. Um, so I I think that the the biggest place where um, firm owners may go wrong is in communication with the client, um, and that is expectations, um, deadlines, meeting of or exceeding those expectations. Um, as opposed to making promises that you over and over again, don't deliver on. Um, and I think that before we start looking at subtleties, maybe we need to look at the, those bigger picture items, you know, are, are, are you telling your clients, I mean, we'll use your estate planning example. Are you telling them, listen, the estate planning process takes four weeks and then you're turning around and closing it out in three or are you telling them this estate planning process takes four weeks and you're dragging it on to a 10 week process? Right. Uh, and, you know, I think that from the place of um, you, you're, you need to solve the client's problem. Part of solving the client's problem is for them to know what's next. So I think if we, if, if we get better at knowing what's next, that is going to go a long way in the customer service arena. What, what are your thoughts on that? And, and, and do you have any specific tools around that to help people with that? Right, remember clients are coming to us to help solve a problem. You know, we're lawyers, this is something where in a lot of cases, if they wanted to represent themselves, they probably could, but they want us to do it because we're gonna save them time, we're gonna save them headaches because we've been there before. And we need to remember that even if we're not you know, board certified or, or the legal ethics rules can't, uh, won't allow us to say that we're an expert on something, that's how we present ourselves. You know, we've been here before. We are the expert Sherpa who is gonna guide you to the top of Everest because we've done this so much, you know, yeah, we'll take the oxygen tanks too, but we're also gonna help you carry your gear, but we're gonna get you to that mountaintop, whatever that looks like. And so if you're struggling to tell clients this is what it looks like, then it it's hard to expect the clients to take a lot of faith in you. Now, I have clients who ask, well, how long does this process take? And, you know, I can say, well, look, we'll have this first meeting. We'll be done in the first, you know, we'll, we'll come out of that meeting with a rough plan. Then I'm going to send you the sketch of the plan and you're going to approve that. I'll tell you right now, it takes clients usually one to two weeks just to take the time to open the email and look at the PowerPoint diagrams. And I do want clients taking time to go back and uh, look at those plans before we move forward. I'm not taking a fast food approach to this where it's you come in and you say, look, all of my spouse and then all of my kids in equal shares. Like, yes, we could get that done in two hours, sign your documents and out you go. My clients aren't looking for that. We've got assets to manage. We want to make sure that we're not stepping over tax problems and gliding past that. So I need them bought in on the plan. Right. And I tell clients, you know, once you, once you prove that, we're going to draft documents. Just our normal queue, it takes about a week, week and a half to get drafts out. 
that's when I know you're going to take weeks, if not months, to go through those documents. And I've designed the documents so that, you know, for wills, we're putting as much of it as possible in the first few pages in as simple as possible language to understand. Like, these are your fiduciaries. This is where stuff goes. This is what happens. And we're leaving most of it to the back of the document where clients just, you know, unfortunately will say, okay, at this point, you know, legalese, 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 that as the lawyer, I've got to have in there, but we're designing it so that it's easy to read. Clients have their roadmap from that first session. They know what they should be looking for. And all the major points are in that roadmap so that when they get the documents, they're not lost. They can see, okay, this page in the roadmap lines up with this page in the will. It said section right. 2.1 is where I was going to leave my uh, Fabergé egg collection to dear Aunt Doris. Look, section 2.1 says uh, Fabergé egg collection goes to dear Aunt Doris. And it helps them see through all of the stuff that I need to have around it. It makes it easier for them to understand it. And by making it easier to understand it, it reinforces I'm the one who knows what I'm doing on this. Okay. So let's take a step back and go to the beginning of, of the client engagement. New client signs on with you. What are the things that you think that somebody should be doing immediately within the first day, week, you know, two weeks of that engagement to get this client on the right track for stellar customer service? So we as lawyers, uh, you know, any professional, we have so much information that we have jammed in our heads that we're trying to just get into our clients so they can make great decisions. You know, again, we're here to help them guide them to the result they're looking for. And so how can we make the education process easier for our clients? What I've found for, again, for before that first session, my job is to educate clients so that they walk in. If they have thought about some of the questions I'm asking, even if it's just a minute and a half of who should be in charge, they're going to be in a better position than if I say, hey, Moshe, who do you want to name as your executor? And if they don't know who, who an executor is or what that job entails, and then, you know, it's like throwing a grenade and then running right behind it and expecting to have a good result. You, right. you know, you prime those questions, kind of let them sink in over a week or two before that real deep meeting. And even if they don't have an answer, they've at least kind of internalized it. So we put clients on an email drip campaign that's just about education of, you know, here's five days one email per day. It's entertaining so that clients want to read it. Plus, we also have the backup even bef you know, if you're in the lead cycle before you've really raised your hand, but you've reached out want to, once to say, yeah, I'm interested in this. You're getting an email once a month from us that's not just, hey, when you sign your will, make sure you've got two witnesses there because that's what Texas law requires. Clients either know that or they don't care. Like they're trusting us to know those things, but we're sending out, you know, that what I've, my, my referral sources have told me because they're on the same list. It's actionable and it's useful. It's information they can pass along to their clients so that they are thinking about it. It's like, it's not just, do you have a will, but where's the original? Because right. if we don't have the original in Texas, it makes the process much harder. And it's thinking about those next level questions that we want to address for our clients. So we know, and we can show them like, hey, it's not just, do you have a will? It's not the sofa you bought 15 years ago that works in the house that you were in at the time and you were able to shoehorn it into that middle house. And now you're at kind of your dream house for the next 15 years and it works, but you, you know, maybe you wanna refinish it or you know, reupholster it. It's, you've gotta tweak the plan. You've gotta make sure like flying an airplane, you're adjusting. And so you're making small adjustments as you go and not large, you know, major shifts. Now, is there any way that you can use client feedback to enhance the customer service experience? Absolutely. And this is one of the ways, you know, one of the secrets that people think they're getting is like, hey, how did we do? Every time you get asked this in a restaurant or anywhere else, what's your answer? Eh, okay, it's fine. It's great. Um, you just want the person to think, you know, just please just go away. You haven't engaged them. 
And so when we were checking people out at the hotel, we didn't ask, how was your stay? I mean, you would, but that wasn't the, that was just the broad strokes of the question. What you really were asking and what we were specifically asking in the specific wording was, what could we have done to make your stay better? Because Mm -hmm. you're engaging them. It's not a yes or no. You're forcing them to stop, kind of engage with you. And they may say, look, there was nothing you could have done. It was wonderful. But then, you know, you'll get such better answers that you'll start to figure out, oh, you know, these documents were hard to read. Oh, you know, that were that verbiage there, it makes sense to John the lawyer, but it doesn't make sense to, uh, you know, Bill and Sue the clients. But John's just seen it so many times. And that's the other side. You know, we, I've got uh, high school interns who work for me every summer through the high school I went to. And I give them the, the homework that we give our clients. I'm like, look, if you're high schoolers, you should be able to read this. And if you've got questions, we need to change the verbiage. And so every summer we're, you know, we're definitely taking it down to high school level, not because it's unimportant or simple, but if the high schoolers can understand it, it's a really good gauge of being able to convey information to our clients. Right. Now to your example of checking out of the hotel, um, isn't wait. I mean, if somebody stays in your, in your property for three days or four days, waiting until they check out is probably waiting too long to find out if there's anything you can do better. Right. Because what if you can enhance their experience while they're there? So what are your thoughts on that? And should we be checking in with our clients throughout the engagement to make sure that they're happy and to see where we can be doing better? Because I feel like we, we wait until, until we're done to ask for the review, right? We, when we're done, we're like, oh, I need a Google review. Are, are you happy with your experience? No, I'm not going to ask you for a review. Are you happy right. with your experience? Yes. Oh, do you mind writing a review for me? Um, it, it's almost like we're, we're not really interested in, in the, the truth behind that answer. It's just, what are we going to get out of it to enhance our firm further? Um, so what, what kind of cadence do you think is appropriate uh, any specific recommendations that you have on when should we be checking in with our clients to see if their 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 their, their um, satisfaction is being met? Oh sure, I mean this is something you check in, you take the temperature whenever you're there with the guest. Now we were asking at checkout because hey, just about everybody was checking out. So we knew we were going to get them, you know, get their mostly undivided attention for three minutes. So we were going to ask there, but that was for us at the front desk. You know, there were many times where we may not see a guest, you know, other than they check in and they drop their keys, run out the door uh, to check out. We might not see them at all in a, in the course of a, you know, 15 hour stay, they come in for the night, they've got a business meeting in the morning and they're gone. So you just look for the ways that you can always make sure when you've got those interactions. Look, if they're having breakfast, uh, the folks in the F&B department know how to kind of gauge and make sure things are working for them. But they also have clients who are get clients. They have guests who aren't necessarily staying at the hotel. So it's, you know, it wouldn't be, how is your stay going? It's, you know, how are things going? Kind of probe, but don't, be, don't interfere and don't slow the process down. For me right now, I know that my clients are busy and our job is to move the needle for them. We want them getting those documents in place so that their plan is in place to avoid the messes they don't want their families to have to experience. I want them focused on getting that result. And so we're not, you know, we're intentionally not looking for reviews right now because I want them focused on let's get these results done. It doesn't mean if they say, oh, John, you know, I had a client text me this morning. It's like, can we leave you a video review somewhere? Yes, of course you can. Um, But I also know where this client is. I also know where she is along her journey and what she needs done. It's okay to manage that and kind of take that key key, uh, indicator from her in ways that clients who, you know, have been sitting on documents for four months, like, hey, um, we need you done on this. Can we dist- can we divert you from the major task you're paying us for, for the marketing task that's great for us? Right. 
And, you know, it, like, does it mean we have potentially fewer reviews than we should? Yes. But I'm taking the point of, we, you know, the reviews will come. We've got ways to get those. And we, you know, we are, we are grabbing them. So I'm not, you know, I'm not doing it at the expense of the client service. Yeah, absolutely. So let me ask you this, John, um, because we're, we're, we're getting near the end of this interview. We're going to have to wrap up because of time constraints. What is, uh, is there anything that I haven't asked you about that we really need to talk about when it comes to customer service and creating that experience? Uh, two things I want to think about. So I've kind of talked around this a few ways, but every business sells a product of some sort. And that product is a combination of three different things. There's some physical product. So, you know, for me as a trust and estates guy, you know, the paper, the experience of coming into the office, what does the table look like? Is it clean? Part two, technical, the technical component. So this is the legal knowledge we bring to bear. And then finally, there is that service component. People are paying for a certain amount of service. And that is just how the delivery, you know, how that the physical and technical components are delivered. No, again, smiling, friendly, clean. Is it easy to deal with? It does it, is it done quickly? Just that, think of it, think of service as the adjectives on your business. Fast, clean, friendly, easy, smooth. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. And again, as lawyers, people are primarily coming to us for that technical component. When people are going to Disney, they're going for that service. They're going for the adjectives. Why? People want to spend time. You know, if you gave somebody a day off and said, what do you want to do with this day? Blue sky budget. You know, for me, Disney's at least on the list. Right. Go into your lawyer or your accountant or your doctor, or your, uh, your engineer. That's not on the list with a blue, blue sky budget for a Saturday off. And we need to remember, don't get distracted with those uh, those shiny objects of you know having the over the top wow moments, there's a place for it, but it has to take a backseat to the technical expertise we're hired to deliver on. Right. The other thing that I want to you know, uh, unfortunately, we don't have the time to really get into it, but service is not just how you deliver to your clients; it's also how you deliver your work experience to your employees. And so what are you doing to make, you know, what are the adjectives on working for you? Is it easy? Do people know what to do? Is it clear? Are there clear expectations of what needs to be done? Do you have processes to follow? You know, it, it, the process is, it's, it comes down in knowing what to do. You know, here I am over 10 years out from working at the Four Seasons and I could still go back in and check somebody in and check somebody out with about a two minute look at the checklist for getting it done. And right. somewhere in my office, I've got the checklist for uh, for things. And I've looked at it. It's like, oh, yeah, that, that's how I've got the service uh, standards for what it takes to check somebody or to deal with somebody on a phone call. And we still integrate that here at the at the law firm to make sure that we're taking care of people. Awesome. Yeah. Love that. Love both of those things. So, John, uh, we're, we're going to be wrapping up. I, I, I want to leave with two things. First of all, how do people follow up with you if they want to take the next step with you? Um, you have your own podcast. I'd love for you to plug that uh, yes. for us. And, you know, Let everybody know the name of the show. We'll link to it in the show notes and anything else that you want to share. Um, and then also, if you, uh, if you have one parting piece of advice that you want to leave for, for our audience, we'd, we'd love to hear that as well. Super. Thank you, Moshe. Yeah, I have a five-star council podcast. Uh, start with episode one and we'll have a link for you. Start there. It really is my podcast. You know, what I'm trying to do there. Moshe, what would a law firm built by the founders of Disney, Four Seasons, Zappos, and Amazon look like? I don't know, but every episode... <laughs> I'm and trying to figure lines, that out, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's look. The pricing would be appropriate, but you know, we there are all sorts of things that we can do. I don't know what it would look like, but every episode, I'm bringing on folks 
to figure out like what's one little piece that can get us closer to that because it's not just you know slap everything the four season does into a law firm we've got to adapt what they do and make it work within the context of a law firm and so bringing in folks not only within the legal industry but from outside the legal industry we recently had a copy editor who works for me and helps me with my web copy Mm-hmm. And she's focused on comedy copy editing and how you can bring humor into your copy. Now, it's not going to be for everybody, but it does work for me. Right. And, you know, and like having, you know, among other things, my dogs on my website as employees works mm-hmm. to get the right clients in. And so right. that leads into the what's the parting piece of advice. You have so much freedom. We have so many clients that are available to us. We don't have to take everybody that just comes through the door part of setting up our service and the experience received by our clients is making sure we're picking the right people. Right. And so having the dogs on the website is the shibboleth that I use for my clients. The people who come in and say, this is, you know, like I get once a month, somebody will say, look, we picked you, you were, it was down to you and somebody else, but we saw your dogs on your website. Or I've had other clients just uh, send me emails afterwards. I didn't see this, but I'm so glad you're the one who has dogs on your website this is the kind of person we am. Here's the thing. This is not a one-way valve for that. I'm signaling to certain clients, this is how I'm going to behave. This is the kind of person I am. I'm sure I'm getting just as many clients or potential clients who are saying, this guy is not serious. I don't want to deal with this guy. And they're going somewhere else. And I'm making it easy for them to see as soon as possible who I am and what I'm going to do and how I'm going to behave. And if they don't want a guy who puts his dogs with fake profiles and fake dog inspired titles on their website, great. I've made it super easy for them to realize that as soon as possible, because, you know, probably like most law firms, the attorney and staff bio page is the most visited page on my website. And we're probably getting a lot of people who kind of check out after that. So again, it's making it easy uh, leaning into who you are to get the clients you work best with. Yeah. You got to just add like a job opening section. If you've got, if you've got four paws, put yep. your application in here, right? <laughs> our bark, our bark office is closed for new applicants at this point, but you know, unfortunately you're just kind of given, given put yourself on the wait list. list. Yep. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome stuff. John, thank you so much for, for sharing all that with us. It's really, really makes you think about, you know, everything that you're doing and, and, and put more thought into the actions that you're taking, you know, who would have thought the selection of the paper clips you're using would make a difference. Right. Um, And you got to start thinking about these little, little subtle messages, but don't forget the big picture also, you know, um, get feedback along the way. Uh, make sure that you're that you're that you're meeting or exceeding expectations, and first and foremost that you are keeping the primary goal in focus, which is to um, to solve their problem. And as long as you're doing that, uh, everything else will kind of fall into place with little tweaks along the way. Uh, so all, a great great message all around. Uh, really appreciate it, folks. Check out John's podcast and. If this is your first time tuning into the Profit With Law podcast and you enjoyed this interview, we have so much more for you. You can go back and listen to well over 200 episodes in our archives. You can also hit the subscribe button and get notified every time that we release a new episode, which is twice a week, every Tuesday, every Thursday. So looking forward to having you as a subscriber. If you're a longtime subscriber, we really appreciate you. you, you can take this episode and share it with somebody else. Share it with another attorney friend of yours or even a non-attorney. We, we accept all listeners, but share it with somebody who you think can gain from this conversation. Uh, the more that we share this with others, the more we spread the word and people can get um, benefit, not just from John's interview, but from all the other amazing content we have here on the show. So once again, thank you, John. We will catch everybody next week. Take care. Have you been enjoying the show? We sure hope so. To make sure you never miss an episode, be sure to hit the subscribe button in your podcast player app. Next week, we will be back with more valuable resources and ideas on how to break the mold and take your law firm to the next level. 